All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. And um, we're gonna get started. So thank you all so much for coming to our party. And Governor Lamont and I want to acknowledge some very special people and organizations. And we'll start with former Secretary of State, Miles Rappaport. <laughs> Common Cause Connecticut, Sherry Quickmeyer, Executive Director. <laughs> the NAACP, Corey Betts and Scott X. Esdale. Safe Vote Connecticut, Carol Rizzolo. What will you have to do next? League of Conservation Voters, Lori Brown. League of Women Voters, Patty Rossi, Vice President. AFL, CIO, Ed Hawthorne, President, Shelley Davis, Executive Vice President. Bridgeport Generation Now, Callie Gail Hyman and Jameen Davis. AARP of Connecticut, Clinton Center. Pro-Choice, Connecticut, Liz Gustafson. <laughs> Planned Parenthood, New England. Gretchen Rappa. ACLU of Connecticut, David McGuire, Executive Director. The Connecticut Project, Melvin Medina. Every, everyday Democracy, Merle McGee. <laughs> Connect Congregations Organized for a New Connecticut, Matt McDermott. <laughs> Working Families Party and Sarah Ganong, State Director. And anyone else we forgot? <laughs> oh my goodness. So we are so delighted to be here because uh, we know that the people of Connecticut, when they were asked, said loud and clearly that they wanted early voting especially after we all went through the COVID pandemic and people wanted it to make it easier uh, to vote in our state. We even saw an increase in voter turnout during very challenging times because people had the opportunity to vote early and to vote in a way that was convenient for them. So after uh, election day in November of last year, we heard very loudly and clearly that people wanted more time to vote. And we're a progressive state, but I got to say we were behind the curve. But today we have caught up because of the great work from so many wonderful people, wonderful organizations, our legislature that worked so hard to ensure that the people of Connecticut could vote early. So I want to say a special thank you to Governor Lamont, Secretary of the State, Stephanie Thomas, our former Secretary of the State, Denise Merrill, and so many others. Thank you all so much. So with that, we're going to bring up Denise Merrill, who said she was retiring. However, <laughs> She just was relentless and enthusiastic and working hard, and she showed up all across the state 
to advocate for this very uh, important change. Uh, Denise Merrill, come right up and give us a few words. Oh, it's great to be back and to see all of you, because you are the ones that made this happen, honestly. And I'll be the historian just for a second. I think I first started working on this, and I asked Miles about this just a little while ago. Was it when I first came in office, and that was in 1993. Oh, yeah, you and I were Yes, Susan was chair of GAE, and I was vice chair. And we got in a lot of good trouble together. But early voting apparently didn't wasn't a thing yet at that point. There were probably only like 36 states that were doing early voting. Um, and it was, it was later when I became secretary in 2010 that that was one of the first things we tackled because by then there were like 42 states doing early voting and we were not. And, and the same with absentee balloting, which we will get to in a few minutes. Um, but. So we did, we fought hard, we got it on the ballot in 2014. Some of us don't wanna talk about that because what happened was we just thought it was a slam dunk. Sure, this is gonna pass, but no one really knew what it was. It was still, I think it's time had not yet come because the public did not understand that this was for them. Everyone was trying to figure out who would have the political advantage, you know, what would happen to the Democrats or the Republicans or whoever if we had more days of voting. It wasn't ever about that. It was always about the people and the voters and how could we make things easy for them. So I think we learned our lesson. And the second time around, when we went to get it back on the ballot, and I cannot thank enough the, the leaders of the General Assembly, uh, the governor, everyone who helped us get it passed for the because we had to pass it two different years. We didn't have enough of a majority. It's really hard to change a state constitution, and that's what we were trying to do. And so we got there. It was on the ballot. A lot of us thought it just took us far too long. But on the other hand, you know, now we have the voice of everyone in the state. And as Susan said, they spoke loud and clear. We want this 60%. It passed with a 60% vote. And that's, that's great. And so it is really thanks to the work of everyone in this room and a lot of other people out there who understood how important this was, not only for our state, but for democracy. There is no reason anyone should have to stand in line to vote ever again in this state. So that's, um, I think the time for speechifying is done. I, I think enough said, uh, the voters have spoken, we have all spoken, and these folks up here and many others have helped make it happen. I cannot thank enough Governor Lamont he and I went through this whole pandemic thing, and uh, it, was, it was rough. And voting was just one of the issues he was dealing with, but it was a big one. And people were panicked at the idea that they wouldn't be able to vote. So we crafted a solution, and he was there all the way, and he understood how important it was to the voters. So a big thank you to Ned Lamont. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna turn the mic over to some others, but again, thank you to the two chairs of uh, GAE. They've taken over the mantle on this and they did an amazing job. And uh, I never really thought we'd be here in this way. It was bipartisan vote. You know, times have changed. It took us 10 years or maybe 20, but we're here. Thank you very much. <laughs> our two co-chairs of the GAE committee, and we'll start with Senator May Flexer. Good afternoon, everyone. Wow, thank you very much. I had a rough morning, so that means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just thrilled to be here, to see this work as has already been described this afternoon, this years of commitment by all of us in this room and, and so many people all across our state to see this 
early voting finally become the law of the land here in the state of Connecticut. What an incredible victory, and it's a credit to every single one of you. Congratulations. I'm really thrilled um, to be here and to have been a part of this work over the last uh, seven years that I've had the opportunity to serve as chair of the Government Administration and Elections Committee in the State Senate. I want to thank um, my leaders in the Senate, Senator Looney and Senator Duff, for le their leadership on this. I want to thank my former co-chair, who can't be political and can't be at an event like this anymore, but Representative Dan Fox did a lot of work over six years to make this a reality, and so great credit to him. And I've been really lucky um, to follow in the footsteps and working closely with Secretary of State Denise Merrill um, over many years to make this a reality and this year to have as my new partners who you couldn't ask for two better people doing this work and advocating for the best system of early voting for our state here in Connecticut than Secretary of State Stephanie Thomas and my co-chair Representative Matt Blumenthal. <laughs> like many of you spent a lot of time over last summer and fall educating voters on the question on the ballot if you hadn't done all of that work we would have never had the opportunity to debate this bill that's being signed here today and i'm so grateful to all of you for making it clear to every voter in connecticut what the choice was on the ballot and how we could finally have this system of early voting here and i'm so grateful to each and every one of you who talked to your neighbors who went door to door who made phone calls who did everything in your power to make sure that voters were informed last november and to have a resounding 20 point victory on a ballot initiative to change our constitution was absolutely incredible so thank you for all of your work i'm really thrilled that this legislation is such a strong uh, system for early voting. Uh, Secretary Thomas and Representative Blumenthal and I spent many hours this year uh, going through the fine details of every single bit of this policy, trying to make sure that we had a system that was built on our great system here in Connecticut, where we have this local control of our voting system that gives people in Connecticut great confidence in our voting system. Our voting system here works well because of that local control and the incredible election workers who do this work day in and day out. And I'm deeply grateful for them and grateful for the work that they're going to do to implement this uh, moving forward. I'm hopeful uh, that we're going to see higher turnout because of early voting. And I think that we will in 2024. We're going to see more people able to participate in our democracy. And as I've said on the Senate floor uh, many times, for those of us that live and breathe politics, voting is easy because it's all we think about. But for those of us who have other concerns in life, who have multiple things that we're trying to juggle, we deserve a better opportunity to participate in our democracy. And that's what Connecticut's new early voting law is going to give all of us. I'm so grateful to Lieutenant Governor Bysiewicz and Governor Lamont for their leadership and excited to see Governor Lamont's pen on this legislation in just a few moments. Thank you. And now State Representative Matt Blumenthal. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a great day. Uh, not for nothing are we called the land of steady habits. And the story that you have heard about how we have finally come uh, the fourth to last state in the country to have <laughs> a system of early voting uh, here in the state of Connecticut, but a good and a robust one uh, is a long one. And it involves lots of people doing great work, uh, starting with Secretary Merrill, who uh, put us on this path and put in countless hours and sweat equity and political capital to make it happen. Um, certainly, we have to thank all the advocates who are here today uh, for all your work pushing us on the right path. And um, the governor and the lieutenant governor's steadfast support on this issue uh, has been instrumental to us getting it done and answering the charge that the voters gave us. Um, I certainly couldn't ask for a better co-chair than Senator Flexer. Um, and our colleagues on the GAE committee have been so instrumental and supportive, and so have our colleagues in the, le in the legislature and our leadership. And I want to say a special thank you to Secretary Thomas and her staff. Uh, they were absolutely instrumental to us putting together the system and making, it sure, making sure that it works for the people of, the, of Connecticut and the people who have to implement it. Um, and on that point, uh, sorry, you can clap. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, and on that point, I wanted to say a special thank you to all the registrars and town clerks and volunteers who have uh, helped us along the way, given their input and their support. You know, uh, the right to vote is a fundamental one under both our state and our federal constitution, but even more than that, it is the right on which all other rights depend. It's the way we vindicate all those other rights, the way we vindicate our ability to speak out and have our voice heard, and the ability of everyone to participate safely, securely, and accessibly in our elections is reflected in the representation we have and the policy that that representation gets done. And so, in my mind, there is no more important right to vindicate and no more important project than the one uh, we've been engaged with. And so I want to say a very special thank you to the advocates, especially who are here today. But more than anyone, I want to say a big thank you to the voters of Connecticut. You returned this uh, second time uh, a overwhelming charge, and we've answered it in your name. And again, we may be the land of steady habits, but we're developing some new habits now. I look forward to voting early with you. Thank you. So it's my pleasure to introduce one of our fellow constitutional officers who came into a new job with a very big mission, and she met it so well, our Secretary of the State, Stephanie Thomas. Uh, uh, thank you. I could probably spend all 14 days of the early voting period explaining how happy I am. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to try to stick to my notes. Um, I'm truly honored to be here, to be the secretary who gets to witness this signing. Um, but I think the true winners today are Connecticut's voters. So on behalf of the hundreds of thousands of people who voted yes to bring early voting to Connecticut and the millions more who may not know it but will avail themselves of the opportunity in the years to come, I would like to thank everyone here today for making this possible because we heard loud and clear that an early voting program is necessary for modern civic life. Um, so thank you, Governor Lamont, for your vocal support. Thank you to my predecessors, Lieutenant Governor Bicewitz, former Secretary Merrill and Rappaport, um, to all the advocates gathered here, many of you who knew me when, you know, I was on the streets in the struggle too. Um, and special thanks to Senator Flexer and Representative Blumenthal and all the elected officials who voted yes on this bill because they really prioritized it and it's not always easy to usher things in in one session, but they got it done. Um, but I also would like to thank my team in elections and our IT division. None of you know it, but <laughs> all the work they've done so far and all the work they have yet to do will make sure that we actually have an early voting program implemented. Um, and last but certainly not least, I'd like to extend my gratitude to the registrars of voters. Um, early voting truly won't be possible, would not be a reality without all of their hard work and the thousands of poll workers who will be needed to implement it. Um, so we're ready to go. All the hard work begins for us now, but congratulations to all of you. <laughs> And finally, the fearless leader of Connecticut, Governor Ned Lamont. All right, well, let me thank everybody that Susan's thanked. That, um, and we got such broad-based support for such a good idea. What the heck took so long? I know, Matt, land the steady habits. Well, we had to break a habit, and break that habit that was going to make it a little more complicated for people to vote as their lives get more and more complicated. And uh, I appreciate each and every one of you for the perseverance to stand up here. You know, Miles and Common Cause got this going early on. Denise has been working this uh, every day. Susan was pushing this as Secretary of State. Stephanie got it done. <laughs> we got it done with some um, great legislative support and leadership in the GAA. Just a couple of thoughts. I mean, follow what Matt said. Um, 
don't take the vote for granted. I mean, people around the world are, are fighting for the right to vote. And um, it is a hallmark of uh, our democracy. And it's particularly important because you want people to vote. You want people to have a stake in the election. You want them to have a stake in the outcome. I think it, it, it's the glue that holds our society together, knowing that each and every one of you can make a difference with your vote. And uh, if we can do, make it just a little bit easier to be able to vote with integrity, it makes a difference. And um, I, I felt, you know, part of our job is to give people a reason to vote and a reason to stand up. And when Susan and I were running in 2018, election night was a very rainy night. Remember people standing there in New Haven with those wet ballots, uh, you know, an hour just waiting to get in. Uh, unnecessary. We can vote. We can vote with integrity. We can join the other uh, 45 states or whatever it is and get it done. So let's sign the bill. advocates to join us up here for the bill signing ceremony. Okay, so are there any on-topic questions? Could you speak to concerns that there isn't enough funding in the budget to implement the program? I will do what it takes to make sure the um, program gets implemented appropriately. You know, we are partners with our municipalities. You know, they do have unprecedented amount of aid there, but we're going to do our part as well. And when it comes to the public relations campaign, to make sure people know you can early vote, you know, we'll be making our case, and I guarantee you every campaign in the state is going to be loud and clear how we can make sure that you can exercise your full rights to vote and vote early. What would you like to see come next? I think you've uh, indicated your support in the past for ranked choice voting. There's other things, you know, universal mail voting, uh, no excuse absentee voting. What would you like the state to do to move I this. like the absentee balloting. That's one more way you can be able to vote, vote with integrity. We did that during um, COVID for, uh, I think, very real reasons. The majority of the people exercised their right to vote that way with absentee ballots, something I'd like to uh, extend. And uh, we'll work on that. Land of Steady Habits may take a little while, but we're going to get that done. And ranked choice voting, I think that's going to require a little study, and uh, that's something we're going to do. It failed to move the bill that would have moved up the presidential primary date, uh, which was a bipartisan thing. The state party chairs of both parties were 
Anybody figure out a way to resurrect that? Any of you guys have an answer to that? I was disappointed we didn't get that done. What the heck happened? We're working on it. Yeah. <laughs> We're working on it. I think if there's an opportunity for a special session, we'd love to see that pass through. Yeah. Is there any plans for a special session? No. <laughs> Not at this point. <laughs> Anything else you think the, you know, I think the feeling a lot, you know, was mentioned that this was, we're the 46th state, we caught up, what is the 47th, what do we need to do to, you know, move beyond uh, just catching up? Let's ask a former Secretary of State. Oh, well, I think the next step is universal absentee voting, uh, and when that happens, um, I think a lot of people are going to use that, and maybe there won't, we won't see the crush of early voting because people can easily vote early with a universal absentee ballot. So we're going to kind of have to see how it goes and do what all these folks have been doing already, which is work closely with our town clerks and our registrars so we know what's happening on the ground. But Madam Secretary, if you'd like to weigh in. Um, I would just say that we have to look at entering the 21st century, right? Um, and that means top-notch equipment. It's no secret. I think we need new tabulators. <laughs> um, and to the Lieutenant Governor's point, I think we need to move toward a holistic system. So uh, universal access to absentee ballots coupled with early voting and election day voting, um, risk limiting audits, which is a boring topic that no one pays attention to. But once we um, start uh, uh, creating a holistic program, I think the voters of uh, Connecticut will be very pleased. They had uh, they approved bonding, right, this year for new tabulators. How soon do you think that that will begin to roll out. Um, so the bonding committee did approve the funding. That's uh, one step in the process. Um, I am hopeful that in 2024 we could be looking at new equipment. The RFP is written. And we just need the approval to send it out. On absentee voting, the system you're talking, is this a system where you would have to request an absentee ballot or one where you would like to see everyone get mailed an absentee ballot? Um, I think as most people realize, so first we have to pass a constitutional amendment that would allow for uh, no excuse absentee balloting. And much like we saw with early voting this year, once that constitutional amendment passes, then it goes back to the people's house and the legislature gets to debate, have public hearings, and uh, weigh what makes sense for Connecticut. Also note, in answer to your first question, we're still catching up on access, but we did pass this year the most comprehensive State Voting Rights Act in the country.